Instead of don't stare, let's start teaching say hello. Hey everybody. Welcome back to my channel. So this one is one I'm very excited about. Because um, it's a topic that I'm passionate about. So a dear friend posted this quote, or this meme, and I thought, you know what? That would be a great a great thing to vlog about um, and talk to you about it from my experiences and my perspective. So I cannot tell you how many times I have been in restaurants or gas stations, public places where young children kind of come in and they see me and they stop and they stare. Or they'll peek around the booth at a restaurant, or they will, you know, turn around in their chair to look at me or to watch me because I am different. I'm different from anybody in the room. I stand out. It's something that they don't know or understand or maybe have rarely seen. It happens quite often. And unfortunately, what also happens quite often is they get scolded for staring or for looking at me or for being curious. They aren't encouraged to say hello or to ask questions, which makes me sad on the one hand, but on the other hand, I understand where their parents are coming from, you know, because they don't want to invade somebody's privacy, or they don't want their child to be perceived as rude. And not everybody is the same as far as being comfortable with their disability or being comfortable to talk about their disability. And obviously I, I can only speak for me. Um, I can't speak for all of us with disabilities, but as far as I'm concerned, I love it when people say hello. I love it when people ask questions. Um, kids are the best because they're super honest and they're super curious. And I feel like it's an important teaching moment for me. Um, I don't want them to be fearful. I I want them to be comfortable and to also, whether it be me or a little girl or boy in their class or a grandparent or, you know, anyone in their lives with a disability or even people that they run into with a disability, um, I want them to be inclusive of those people because we are just like, you know, mostly everybody else. We just have a few more challenges, have to do things a little bit differently. But we want to be included in the conversation and included socially and we just want to be a part of the same world that everybody else is a part of. So, you know, if you're a mom or a dad and you have a little one, um, that encounters a situation like that and they are curious, I would suggest maybe you as the parent 
talking to the person and saying, you know, my daughter's just curious or do you mind if she comes and says hello? Because I guarantee you about 90% of the time, they're going to be on board. They'll be excited to share with your little one. They'll be excited to, you know, show them that differences make you unique and beautiful, not scary. And I also feel like it's important to start, you know, teaching them and showing them when they're young to always be kind and to always say hello and to not be fearful of people that are different and to um and that they aren't going to you know get in trouble but like I said I can you know I can only speak for myself as far as someone with a disability um but I feel like teaching them early on to say hello to smile and acknowledge the person with the wheelchair in the corner of the room. And I'm not saying like, go out of your way to talk to somebody, but don't go out of your way not to, because that is what I experience so often when it comes to like adults or older people, a big portion of them go out of their way to kind of act like I'm not there. Um, obviously this isn't with people I know, but people don't make eye contact. People don't smile. Um, people don't open doors sometimes. I mean, obviously this isn't all the time, but I feel like if we could start when they're young and teach them to not be afraid and to say hello and to be inclusive, um, that maybe as they grow and get older, they will be a little bit more thoughtful to make eye contact or to smile, to open the door, to say, how are you? Because I just feel like it's really important to make everyone feel included, wanted, needed, just because they're in a wheelchair or they have Down syndrome or they have cerebral palsy and have a walker or they face some other sort of mental illness doesn't mean they shouldn't be treated as everyone else is treated and they shouldn't be you know included in normal everyday things that they shouldn't experience common courtesy because unique isn't scary unique is beautiful so I really hope that this is a dialogue that you start having with your kids or with your friends or with your Colleagues, you know, don't be afraid. And the worst that can happen is you walk up to somebody and say, hi, how are you? And they say, I'm not comfortable. Answering those questions or, you know, that's not a negative thing. That's just a learning experience for you. Um, because I, I for one love it.
I love smiling at the kid, you know, peeking around the booth. I love it when little ones answer questions or ask questions. You know, what happened? I always say, I was in a car accident. I say, that's why seatbelts are so important. Take advantage of that teaching moment. And if you start when they're young, hopefully they won't be fearful as they get older. Um, my nephew Bryce is five. And since, since he was born, they put him on my chest and I held him. As soon as he could feed himself, he helped feed me. You know, he helps give me pills. He opens doors. He's always thinking about, oh, you could get in there, or you couldn't get in there. There's no elevator. I mean, he's just so thoughtful, and I think that's because he's been around me forever. And, you know, I'm normal. This is normal for him. So, instead of don't stare, Let's start teaching them to say hello.